start? Okay, welcome. Uh, just one question for the, the, the I'm sending the, the slides in the end of the day. You get those, right? Okay, because I just had this super long list of emails I'm sending it. But okay. Uh, so if you have questions about that, of course, uh, it's not complete, but uh, main things are in it for now. So, so people coming. Okay, so as usual, I think it's good to have a very quick recap of what we discussed yesterday or what we yeah, up to now, uh, and then get to a bit continuing correlations and then get to modeling. <coughs> people are still. So, so okay. So what did we discuss yesterday? We. I mean, okay, why I'm writing this recap? Because, I mean, wh what is there to keep out of what we discussed? So there were the questions of, uh, okay, we, we were finishing up a bit uh, stylized facts. So what did we see? We saw that, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that there are correlations in the, uh, well, let's write it explicitly. So we discussed this, uh, the question of volatility clustering or in another way to say autocorrelation of volatility in time and actually of soft activity, which we discussed for its own right and we discussed to see the result that, well, okay, we saw the fat tails of price change distributions on, on uh, uh, scales of few minutes to one day, but we, we saw that even on, on much longer time scales, we do not have uh, Gaussian distributions due to the fact that, so that's why the central limit theorem doesn't work, that, that there are correlations in, a, in the size of, of uh, steps in our time series. So, so non-Gaussianity, non-Gaussianity up to long scales. Um, there was actually, actually something I didn't discuss yesterday, and just inside in the slides, if someone's interested, it's just to know that actually what we discussed here is typically for quite liquid markets. So we discussed it was S and P 500 index and related things. And there are there is actually one slide, so so you can look at markets which are extremely non-liquid. Very few, few people trade or have very <laughs> strange structure, where you can have very very this idea of fat tails can go to the extreme, so they can be even more fat without, uh, um, without actually a, a second moment defined. But it is just, I mean, if you want to look at it, uh, you can. So what else did we discuss? I think that was the main things that we had yesterday. Was there anything else? I mean, uh, before the correlations. I don't remember what was the day before. Okay, I think these were the, 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 the main talk. There was, okay, we discussed this leverage effect, but okay, it's good to know. And then we discussed, okay, correlations. So, okay, what they are, a bit why they are important, but that's also for you to think about a bit. And, uh, and so what we discussed is, okay, empirical questions. So just to see how this uh, matrix looks like, what can we do with it in a trivial manner to, to clustering, to try to, to get some information. We, we showed, uh, essentially just looking at the matrix, there are several statistical methods to get information out of a correlation matrix if one is really, I mean, wants to understand the structure, uh, the underlying structure. We discussed the idea of, of uh, principal component analysis very quickly and applying it to, to, the, to the correlation matrix, so to look at eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And, and okay, so and, and from this we, we got to discussing, okay, so, so try, to, try to have some uh, model of what part of this uh, correlation, we, so, so the spectrum of this correlation seems to be very noisy, what is information in it, and we discussed, uh, well, did this uh, very brief introduction to random matrix theory, which is, okay, which is just to know, I mean, okay, if there was this Marchenko Pasteur, formula, which is good to know. I think it's very interesting. It's, we, we, we just stated it. And, um, and, 
and we discussed, okay, so is this, what, is the, what is the information, what's the part of the spectrum which is information? Well, I don't write it because I think you answered. Okay, so it's, I mean, I, I hope it was clear. If it wasn't clear, you, you asked. And so there was one, one more thing that I wanted to, to discuss about correlations that I mentioned in the beginning. So, so what I, uh, so when I introduced all the, all the thing, I said, okay, so the correlation is uh, something like this. So between products I and J, so I and J are products. Sometimes I'm not uh, clear on this, but let's be explicit. So there was this delta T index, which actually yesterday we didn't really use. Actually, I didn't really define yesterday what is delta T. Right? I didn't, so, so delta T is on, on where you are calculated. So you can say that R I delta T is, well, if you are in log price, let's say it's uh, the price at T uh, minus the price at, um, so it's the size of the window on which you calculate your returns. But we didn't discuss it. Actually, it was a correlation I showed. Uh, it was sort of daily correlations. <laughs> Uh, so I want to very quickly go into this. Uh, it's it's uh, from a theoretical point of view, it's, it's it's not a very hard discussion, at least the way I will discuss it. But it's good to know. So actually, this time scale has an importance, and uh, and what it means that actually, well, actually the C I J delta tau depends on delta tau. I mean, I show a figure, maybe that's easier. Yeah. This is always growing, this set of slides. We'll get there, okay. So it's, it's a figure that I made a long time ago. So what we see here, okay, for some reason it's a row. What, what is a C here? It doesn't really matter. So it's the correlation between two companies. Here it's Coca-Cola and Pepsi, just for for uh, for easy understanding, and so the this effect, which is actually called Epps effect, after a guy who was called who is called Epps, Thomas Epps, I think I think he's alive. So the effect the, the effect says that that for high resolution data, so when this delta t here is very low, you get uh, correlations that are significantly lower than the asymptotic values of the correlations for some high level of delta t. Okay. So you measure your returns, you can measure it on in different scales. You can do the cross-correlation of uh, the cross-correlation matrix or just look at one product. And as you increase delta T, your correlation increases. Is it okay? And the claim is simple. Yeah. Yeah. There was an error. It's, it's, uh, it's different, so, so, so log A over B is log A minus log B. Actually, I, afterwards, at the moment, I, was, I had this in mind that I don't remember how I wrote it, but I don't. So yeah, so I, I use log here, of course, one could, so, so this is log minus log. log okay. One could stay in non-log prices. It's, we, we will be a bit vague on this. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so sorry for this, uh, for that error. So, yeah. Yeah, so what, what's here, what, what I call row is what I call C there. Okay. So I, I could rename everything here, but then I will get mixed up when I'm writing from my notes. But so what this simply means is that, okay, you can measure your correlations on, uh, on your returns on different time scales. Let's see the first point here. Actually, I know it's at two minute scales. So th this is not extremely recent data. So the actual values of frequencies might change in time, of course, as I will show. So if you measure two minute returns, and you measure the cross-correlation of this, you get a number of uh, 0 0.7, let's say. And as you increase your window to four minutes, you, you measure this, and okay, so this is up to nine. This is essentially a daily level. It, you see that it goes to an asymptotic level, which is 0.3-ish in this case for these two companies. Okay? So well, this is an effect, so, so that, uh, well, do I have to write it up, or it's, but I don't have... Yes, so well, like that I don't show, but you can guess from this that actually so, so there is an asymptotic value, which is sort of the daily correlations, which is very often, if you look at correlations, it's the daily correlation that you look at. Um, 
So, so the question, of course, what is the cause of this? What, what is the importance, of course? Well, you want to, we might want to understand it in general. Of course, there is also the importance that the bigger your windows are, the less number of windows you can have, okay, trivially. So, of course, you want to have some type of uh, trade-off between uh, good statistics and good measurement of the asymptotic value. Typically, I would guess that you're much more interested in the asymptotic value of this correlation because many of your decisions are more on the daily scale. So, but, but okay, it's not obvious on what scale. You might care about the end the entire curve, but typically people would care about the asymptotic value. So, it's okay, I think the claim is clear. And, uh, and so the question is, uh, what causes this? That's what I want to discuss a bit. And so, okay, one guess that, that you can have, or I give you, and you can think about this. So, so one guess is, uh, is uh, somehow the question of asynchronicity, which I will asynchronicity, which I will discuss in a second. So by asynchronicity, what I mean is that, okay, so what are we doing? We are looking in these windows at returns, but of course, price might not change at all in this window if the window is very small. And then you will have a lot of zeros in this, uh, in this average here. So, okay, you can say that, yeah, sure, the correlation will go down because you're adding enormous amount of zeros into your, uh, into your sum in practice. And uh, which indeed is, you expect is the case. I mean, the, the shorter the window, the more probable that, that nothing happened there. So this is the usual, uh, uh, the usual, the original approach to this. And actually there is a big, uh, there are several results of, okay, how can you measure correlations in asynchronous time series? But actually, if you look at it, it's not really the case. I mean, it's not the main case in itself. So I show here two figures. One is, uh, so actually it's the right-hand side that you should uh, look at. It's, um, which is, okay, it's a measure of, uh, somehow a measure of asynchronicity. So what it is, is the average inter-trade inter time uh, changing throughout the years. So of course, what you would think is that, Okay, first of all, what do we see here is that, uh, okay, it's, 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 it's an old data set from 93 to 2003, and you see that while inter average intertrade time in the beginning was like order of one minute to few minutes, on, on this, okay, so I didn't say, so these are quite liquid uh, US stocks. So Coca-Cola and Pepsi is there, but, uh, okay, uh, I don't know the names of others, it's, it's a set of liquid stocks. So uh, from a few minutes, it went down already to 2003 to, to let's say, 10 seconds. And today, it's, it's, uh, for the same product, it's, it's, I guess it's more to the, on the one second scale. So, okay, this is somehow a, a measure of asynchronicity. If there are much more trades, then you expect the, to, to have a higher course or less probability of, 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 of nothing happening in a window, okay, to say it in a trivial way. But if you look at the left, you see the same curves that you saw before for different years. So, 93, 97, 2000, 2003. We are, I just scale them to one for simplicity because correlations can vary in time. So what you see is that actually the effects, so there is a quite good collapse of the curves. The effects, so this is somehow the characteristic time of this effect didn't change while, while there was a factor of 10 change in asynchronicity of, uh, or, or the typical frequency of trades, which should change the asynchronicity, the characteristic time of the effect didn't change. So I think that this is not, in itself, it's not a, uh, so it's not enough, and uh, it's, it's, it's not just this. So need, we need another explanation. Actually, the explanation that I will give is, is, is extremely simple. Uh, I mean, in, in, from the math point of view, but it's, uh, it has some strong implications. So actually, okay, what you can, uh, what you can, uh, what, what you can think of, I mean, what, what is sort of trivial, is you can also, you can of course say that you want to write up the, uh, you can write up the return in a window delta t. So that's what we had before. Of course, you can write up a, simply as a sum of the returns in the smaller windows. So not, not very deep. So you can define some, okay, let's define a delta t zero time scale, which is somehow your shortest time scale. Let's say that you have it here. In our case, actually, it would be two minutes, so the left leftmost point, and uh, and so okay, so you, you can write it up uh, like this. I mean, it's I think so. 
hopefully I mean I didn't do a mistake in the next. Okay, and this is what you do is okay. I have a, on the on this delta t scale, I have the price change. It will be the sum of price changes on smaller scales. Uh, summed up, and uh, and so from this one can write up. Okay, so so if this is the case, actually you can write up that that the above. So what is the correlation? That. Uh, That this correlation actually I'm messing up when it's delta t is up and down, but sorry. So, okay, so this is for anyone. You can uh, you can write up the correlation in the following way. And so this x should probably go from something like this. So okay, what I say here uh, is it readable? It's readable. Okay. In mean, the first line, it's clear. <laughs> or I know it's not clear because. We, so what we, okay, I mean, I wrote this up actually, okay. We need to have exercises, so it's an exercise to check at home. I mean, it's, it's, it's a simple stuff, one can write it up, but it's good to write it up once. Actually, maybe, I don't know if I didn't make a mistake. Anyway, so what you can do is write up what is the meaning of this, uh, of this correlation. Is that the correlation on a scale uh, delta t? So, okay, so what is this guy here? This is somehow correlations on... Here it won't be visible. So this will be somehow correlations of uh, i j on some uh, other scale, but lacked correlations, right? So so we have uh, delta t, t zero scale between i and j, but the, the 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 time at which we measure the return is not the same. So it's, uh, so okay. So so this. An exercise, but uh, so is it from this, from this here, substitute and it's it might not even be an exercise. It's, it's, it's like okay. Anyway, but but so so, so, so the equation is uh, yeah, I mean exercise in the sense that uh, do it. I think it's useful. I mean I won't uh, come and check your results. <laughs> But if you don't, okay, so 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 the, the main the main message from this is that correlation on a scale delta t, longer scale, relatively long scale delta t, is some weighted sum or well, it could be weighted integral if you're continuous time, of uh, of of correlations of legged correlations on shorter scale on finer scales, right? This is a t. Uh, sorry, it's a tau. It's a it's a tau which we never defined here. So it's a non-zero. The, the, the what's in the stomach of this and this is not the same. It's a lacked correlation, right? It will be x delta t zero. Just since you're summing on x, I cannot put just one term. It's it's sum of. Uh, is it clear what I'm saying? So so what I'm saying is that so this thing here will be some type of sum of. Uh, Uh, tau and here there is some uh, f of tau, which is which is a simple f. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So what it should explain is simply if we are in this picture here, the finer delta t becomes. So the smaller your windows in which you are measuring your price change, the more probable that nothing happened. More probability is that nothing happened, right? So if you look uh, every millisecond, then very often the price will be exactly the same. And if you look every day, it's very probable that something did change in the meantime. And since so you you are looking at cross correlations, you, you, you look at, okay, in one window, so, so you have the same window of some size of uh, stock I and stock J, and you are 
it is a non-zero term that comes into your correlation if both of them changed. So the, most, the more often, so this actually, essentially, the finer the scale it is, the more, probably, more probable it is that, that at least one of them didn't change. So in your actual correlation, so this, of course, will be empirically the sum of Ri, sum of uh, this times this, so the average sum in 1 over t. So, so you will be adding a lot of zeros into your, uh, into your uh, sum, which will, okay, automatically decrease uh, the sum, so which is the correlation. I don't know if it's clear. So this would be the effect of asynchronicity. Why it is not really the explanation that, okay, this should mean that the effect of the, the typical uh, frequency of market changing should behave as if you changed your window size. So the probability of nothing happening there should change. And actually what, so what this means here is that on the right-hand side what we see is the, the average time between two trades, which went down, let's say, by a factor of 10 in this period that we study. So the probability that nothing happens in a window should have gone down r roughly by a factor of 10. Which would suggest that the, this, that the effect, so this type of curve, the, the increase of this correlation, so it has some characteristic time, on what time it, it gets to its asymptotic value or close to it, should change. And what we see that it actually did not change. It's relatively stable. Is it okay? Uh, so okay, so so it's okay. So this claim here is uh, relatively trivial, of course. On, on a longer time scale, so on a bigger window, if you measure correlations, it will be somehow the the, the sum of correlations of finer scales. So it's I mean, mathematically, it's, it's not a big claim. But actually, what uh, how how these look like? Okay, so the question is, okay, how do these things look like? Actually, I have the the curve. So indeed, so, so okay, what do we show here? Well, okay, what I call F here. Will be will be these correlations will will be these correlations at the finer scale scaled in a way okay let's forget so these are essentially the legged correlations on a on a scale delta t zero okay is it is it okay what I'm saying so now this, what we say is okay let's move into this point this is the finest scale, scale that we have let's look there but not just the the equal time correlation. Which okay now I scaled it up to one, but uh, but the value of this point should be the value of this point. Just it's it's rescaled uh, in practice. That's why it's called f anyway. So what we say is okay, their correlation at time zero is understood, but there so, so there is some no non, non some finite time decay of this correlation, right? Which is okay. Here we have. Uh, It's, it's, well, the correlation, the negative leg correlation between A and B is... Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so if, the, if tau is positive, so I mean, in this definition, uh, sorry, in this definition, if the tau is the difference between this and this. If it's positive, then uh, J is leading I. If it's negative, it's I leading J, right? It's uh, uh, inverting the time is just inverting the, the, the pair, the, the two, the I and J. Is it clear? Yes. So this, this graph is just the CIJ of This graph here is, is, is this okay. thing here uh, up to a normalization. Okay. So that it goes to one, but yeah. So what I just simply want to say is that indeed at non-zero tau, you have some signal here. So right, at least these, uh, let's say, three points here seem to be non-zero. And then, then of course, for, for larger legs, you don't, you, you don't measure any more correlation. So you can use this. Now, I, OK, this is for only for, uh, for, for one given year. So I don't look at the, the, the dynamics of this, this quantity. But actually, what you can do is, um, is, uh, is, of course, use this measure. So this f, what is going to be built in here, and recompose. The correlation at, asym that, at, at longer time scales, because you can say, okay, let's measure all the lagged correlations on a fine scale and, and uh, extrapolate to, to longer scales, and that's actually what we do here. So this is what we get. So, so the, the, the blue points should be the same. In theory, they are the same that were on the first slide. I didn't check them, but I, I did them. Um, and okay, so 
it seems to work roughly. So the measured correlations are what we have seen before, and the, so the, 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 the computed, well, it's analytically here, it's not really analytically, what you do is measure things at the fine scale, uh, delta t zero, and uh, do this sum up for all points and, 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 and extrapolate to, to all other time scales. It seems to work okay, so it seems to explain what, what, what we are looking for, right? Um, so okay, I, th I think it works. So so, but 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 I think the message of this so is okay. It's it's uh, this is the effect. So it's not simply an asynchronicity, but there are these lagged correlations. But actually, one uh, okay, one message that that, that I want to, to to convey with this is that the fact that that the characteristic time of this guy didn't change. So the fact that these curves here for different years seem to behave in the same way means that this seems to behave in the same way for different periods, which means that, okay, even if you change the frequency a lot, somehow this, this, uh, this typical time scale of lagged correlations do not change, um, which means that there is, a, there is some type of, okay, there, there is our claim, okay, here, here it's not an uh, exact claim, so our claim about this, that, so this, that the scale of these do not change, that there is some, something else going on uh, than just the simple, typical frequency of markets, yeah? Yeah, you want? Do you want to complete? I want to complete. Uh, so, so there is something else going on, namely what we call is we think that there is some type of human time scale in the system, so the fact that even if the market got 10 times faster, somehow these lagged correlations didn't really change a lot, it means that this typical few minute scale here has, a, has some physical meaning, well, our interpretation of this physical meaning is that it's somehow the, the time scale on which people react to news or other people acting somewhere. So somehow, even if th things became much more, uh, much faster, there is some type of time scale that remains there even if there are computers trading, which might be coded in many programs. Maybe there are well, programs can be updated every few minutes, which can keep a, keep a, a, constant, uh, a constant time scale in the system. Yes, and then, I, and then you have to tell me if it's clear what I'm saying. Yeah. So, you have brought in C, I, J, delta, T, naught as a function of time. Yes. Okay, now is X, delta, T, naught. The, yes. yes, so what I do here is delta, T, zero is my shortest time scale. So everything is multiple of this. So the, yes. If you apply that uh, relation, the second one, P, I, T, mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay, so you say that if I go to extremely, if delta t goes to zero, you expect everything to go to zero. Yeah, but it's not. Well, delta t, with delta t, I don't go to zero. So actually, if you can see that the first point here is, is at two minutes. So the shortest window that you consider. And the top one is at? The top one is at, uh, is at zero. The top one is at zero, so it's equal time. Uh, but that, sorry, that doesn't change. So, so the, the length of your window is delta t zero. That doesn't change. The fact that leg is zero is means that that you get you look at the same window for the two products, but it's a two minute window. Okay. Okay. So there is a. Of course, if you go down to to extremely short times, you 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 will have an effect on this. So essentially what you can say is that you can define a shortest time scale that you're interested in the system. That's a bit up to you knowing the system what it should be. It could be a minute, it could be a second, probably it's not a nanosecond that you want and not a day. Okay. Okay. And from measuring everything on this scale, you can extrapolate to longer scales. Yeah. Does the, uh, delta t zero change with the frequency of the market? Uh, well, delta t zero is set by me. So it's, I decide on a minimum time scale that I want to study. It can depend on my data, it can depend on my, I mean, so. Um, of course you can change delta t zero, and, and things will change, but the, the idea that from measuring everything on delta t zero, you can extrapolate to delta t won't change. And the other thing, so, so, so this is okay, this is the equation part, and the other message is that I think the fact that it doesn't change 
So things remain constant is, is that it's, it's, it's not just an automatic time scale. It's not just related to the, uh, so the autocorrelation here is not just related to the typical activity of the market, but, but somehow related on to, 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 the, to the time scale on which probably humans can uh, digest information or that they pay attention. So it's, it's, it's an ill-defined concept. It's, uh, it's just... Uh, but, but the fact is that indeed the time scale of things do not change, so this is one explanation. So, okay, so why is this important? Uh, is that, of course, what it should, 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 should help you do? So it's getting to this, which we won't discuss here, but actually it comes up in, in also in, not in finance. So, what it helps you do is okay, what, what do you have? You can measure everything on this scale, on, on the shorter scale, you have a lot of points. Or you can measure everything on the long scale and you will have the asymptotic value immediately and you have to have a trade-off between this. You want to have good statistics, but you want to have the proper value. This comes up actually, not only finance. These type of problems can come up in many, many fields. Okay, there is a method that you can connect, correct these, uh, connect these, uh, these correlations and, and, uh, and, and make a good trade-off between, uh, between, between the two, two things. Is it... Uh, are we okay? Uh, so, okay, so that was it for correlations for me for now. Maybe we'll get back to it a bit later, but I mean, it always comes up. And so, and so what I wanted to discuss is, is okay, we, we so spent essentially three lectures discussing uh, somehow empirical facts. Or we had a bit of modeling, but uh, so, so what I wanted to go into is to discuss, okay, so why... Why do we think prices behave like this? I mean, it won't be in one lecture that we discuss all this, but of course the goal is, is, is going to this direction. And so, so there, is a, there is a notion that we discussed, uh, and we will mention it, but we, uh, we won't be extremely clear on its meaning. So, so, so there is a, what we discussed is somehow market efficiency, which we, in fact, didn't very much, very well define. So one definition uh, that, okay, it has actually several definitions. So one that we can think of after all this that we saw is uh, stati statistical efficiency, which is simply to say, okay, all predictable patterns in prices are, are, are inexistent. So... so Uh, no predictable patterns. So, which is somewhat okay. Uh, we, we, it's somewhat what we saw, right? We, we, show, we saw that uh, that uh, there are no simple correlations. That prices seem to behave in a diffusive manner after extremely short time scales. So, on short time scales, there might be something different. So, it's okay. We might say this. Prices uh, do not contain predictable patterns. We don't say why it is the case. And so there is a typical economics approach to this, which is uh, actually called fundamental efficiency. So no predictable patterns. Of course, what we discussed, actually this I wanted to mention, for lack of, uh, lack of time, so what we discussed were, were, were linear methods. So, so there is this linear, simple method you cannot predict. One could already, but correlation, we could look at nonlinear correlations, we won't do this, so there are several other methods to, to go further in data, but we won't discuss it here. Someone wanted something, yeah. Is this statistical efficiency a hypothesis or an observation? Okay, so... It's, it's an, sort of an, it's an observation. We saw it in the previous uh, courses that, it's, uh, that it's, it's, it's another way to say that, yeah, prices seem to be diffusive and ta ta ta. Uh, but it doesn't, it's, it's not a deep thing. It, it, it doesn't state why it is the case, of course. It's, it's, it's just another word for the same thing, but we'll, we'll get to the discussion. So there is this fundamental efficiency, which is a very, very much uh, economics concept, which is, claims that there is a fundamental value which is the fundamental value of a product and, and, that, uh, and that this is what an asset is really worth. So prices will 
eventually go to this. How will they go to this? Well, it's the usual, it's called this type of arbitrage uh, concept, is that there are some people who know the fundamental value. So this is known to some people. How? We do not know. Uh, and so what they will do is that, okay, if they see that the price is below the fundamental value, then it's a good moment to buy it, by which they will be pushing the price up. And if it's above, they will sell it, by, will they push, by which will they push the price down. So by, uh, those people who know the fundamental value will, uh, will trade in a way that the price indeed goes to this fundamental value. It's, uh, okay, I think it makes sense as a claim, but it's not very clear how, how the mechanism really works. But okay, I mean, we, we can imagine this, that sure, if, if something is very cheap then, and people start buying it, then the price of it will, will be increased for some reason. We will exactly discuss what is the reason, if it's a mechanical reason or it's a, or it's a more complicated reason. So, so this way, do I have to write it up or it's clear what I'm saying? I, I never know how much I should write. Uh, is it clear what I'm saying? It's clear. Clear? Okay, so fundamental value, some know this, and trade accordingly, let's say, so to push the price to, to this value. And, um, and okay, so this in, stuff in, in itself, okay, what is efficiency in this? And then you say, get, okay, so this fundamental value, so FV stands for fundamental value, can only change if there is some real news in the market, some uh, uh, non-anticipated news in the market. Right, and okay, so you can say, sure, things will be, there won't be predictable patterns if the only way prices can change is via a non-predictable underlying process. So it's okay. So it's, it's, it's not obvious how to, how to falsify this in a first approximation. So this says, okay, so this justifies uh, unpredictable prices in, in, its, in its own world. Okay? Uh, again, we are a bit, there might be new concepts, but, uh, but simple claims. Yeah. Something that you cannot predict. Simply news that comes out. I mean, news. So I mean, really new. Exactly, really news. So, so I don't know if you know that tomorrow there will be elections in, or yesterday there were elections in Estonia. And if you really know what will happen, the, all polls tell you that uh, that one side will win. Then it's not really a news when it comes out because you anticipated it. Not anticipated is is really some news. So, but, but the idea is here is, okay, so, so the, the, this fundamental value will depend on something which is non-predictable, so the fundamental value, it, will, it won't be predictable. So somehow it justifies in a hand-waving manner. Uh, but there are some issues with this. So, 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 so indeed, I think you can falsify it. So actually what you can falsify is that, okay, but, but real news doesn't happen that often, right? Or I mean, that's what I claim, and that's, that's the, one of the main critic of this is that uh, is actually prices, so this is actually, so this is a critique of, uh, of, uh, of the fundamental efficiency. Prices are much more volatile than news. So it has exactly this question, okay, what is unanticipated news? How often does it happen that there is really a big news? Well, maybe once a day, or I don't know, but if you look at volatility of prices, they are on super short scales, they are moving. You feel that, that, it's, not, uh, that it's not a very good uh, explanation. It cannot, yeah. A news is a, no, a news, no, okay, so it's, I didn't define it here, so I say some know this. So it might be a news that only some know. So maybe it's only, you have insider information on a company, and, uh, and you get some information. Of course, you have to be big enough to, so that your trading accordingly pushes the price there. So maybe there have to be more, but, so it's ill-defined, but it need not be all. So it, it can be some, some 
other type of information, but still it doesn't change the case that, okay, it, it, it's a strange explanation. And also another thing is that, okay, um, is, uh, which we'll discuss a bit more, but okay, so if it's, if it's news that arrives, which is built into the prices, then it's, you would expect that there, are some, there is some finite scale for, for doing this, actually. We saw some correlations on lag correlations. Uh, why would it be an immediate? So from the diffusivity of prices, we see that after a few seconds, things are, these things are diffusive. So would it take so fast so to, to interpret news? It's, uh, so, well. uh, so it's a question of interpreting news versus uh, short scale diffusivity, right? It's clear what I'm claiming here? So of course, I mean, it, it's a trivial claim it's a, that interpreting news is hard. It's a, first of all, the news can have errors in it. I mean, you don't know where you get it from. Maybe it's not true. Uh, you have to understand it. Sometimes it's not obvious if, it, if a news is positive or negative and all these type of things. Um, so, okay, so there are, uh, I think, some issues with this and we will see further. The alternative use of what, what is this really statistical efficiency? Well, the idea somehow is the, this, this point here to trade accordingly is, is there. So, so the statistical efficiency, well, it's not a nice theory. It's not like fundamental value. Theory, fundamental efficiency would be a nice theory if it were true. Uh, statistical efficiency simply said that, that there are a huge number of, of, uh, of algorithms and, well, it could be people trading, but algorithms trading in the market looking for correlations, uh, trying to exploit uh, trends or any predictable patterns. And trade accordingly, and exactly this way they exclude the, the, the patterns. So this is statistical efficiency. Is, uh, it's essentially algos, algorithms that are trading. So, so it's, it's, it could be people, but in today it's more algorithms. Algos look for patterns, and, and actually they trade accordingly and extend uh, and remove this pattern. So it's, it's a less nice theory, but maybe it's more true. Uh, so, so okay. So, but but let's let, let's let's try to be a bit more uh, more clear about this this view here. It's, it's okay. We are hand waving. We say that it's hard to believe, but we can be a bit more uh, uh, more quantitative. So, okay, if we. What this says is that, okay, there is a fundamental value. Price can go away from it, but it will come back to this, the, to this level soon. So but the question is, okay, uh, question, okay, how, 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 what is the error around this fundamental value? So how far can price go from its value? So, Okay, so, so okay, if it's, if it's, yeah? When you say that algorithms look for patterns, we mean that they don't want to follow patterns because there are no patterns. So we, we agree that there are no predictable patterns. Yeah, but what I say is that the fact that there are no patterns is a lot of algorithms that are looking for patterns. So even if there is a pattern locally coming up, it, it, it is removed. So it, 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 any patterns are essentially one by one removed by, by, by people understanding that they exist. So there can be patterns that come up, maybe more complicated, maybe not uh, uh, simply in this linear uh, predictable fashion. But on average, you do not uh, you measure diffusivity because they are all, all, all exploited. There is, a huge, there is a huge money you can make by exploiting them, so there is a lot of people trying to look for it. So if locally you find out that, that there is a, right, if there is a clear mispricing between, I don't know, oranges in, uh, in the U.S. and Europe, I mean, uh, taken into account the, uh, the money to, 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 to travel between or to, to, to import, if there is a huge mispricing, people will be trading in a way to, to, to eliminate this. So at, as a result, things will be eliminated. It's not that in the first, it's not that God eliminates them. Uh, so okay, so so still I'm I'm, I'm a trivial claim. So fundamental value, if it's okay, if it's one, zero one percent against price can go zero one percent away from fundamental value, good. Then it's a meaningful thing, and if it can go hundred percent away, then it's it's hard to 
then it's hard to handle it in any way. So actually I put a quotation, I like to put quotations, from Fisher Black, who is a super important uh, economist. I think he was uh, trained in physics. Actually, so, so there is this Black and Scholes uh, option pricing. He's the Black from it. And this is a paper called Noise. I mean, I, I leave you read it, or I read it for you. You can read it. So he's, he, he wasn't the person to come up with fundamental efficiency, of course, as you can guess from this. So is it OK? OK, so, 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 so the claim is, or, uh, OK, the claim is that, OK, we might define an efficient market where, where the price is within a factor of two of its value, which is fundamental value. So between half of it and twice, and double of it, two is, of course, arbitrary in extra, but it's not just big, but it's arbitrary. Actually, it's the paper, the, to the title of the paper is Noise, and he discusses how much noise affects all these. And of course, I think almost all markets are efficient almost all of the time. Almost all means at least 90%. So, okay, so what does it mean? That, uh, to me, it's, it's, uh, that it's, 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 a, it's a super non-scientific statement to, to say this fundamental efficiency. Of course, if, if, you can, if anything is fundamentally efficient, then it, and actually you can come up with, so if we base on this, if we want to believe black, then you can make a small calculation. You could say that, okay, so, so, so the, the difference, let's say delta, this is the difference between the fundamental value and the price now. And let's say, okay, so that it's 50%. Uh, uh, then you can write, then actually you can estimate how much time it will take for price to go back to this. And um, so the time estimated, so, so is it clear? So, so time to get back to the fundamental value if we are 30 50% away, it can be written as, uh, so if you know the, the standard deviation of the process, it could be, it will be something like, you can write up somehow like, something like this. So what you want is that via the typical fluctuations to get back to, to, the, to the original price. And so actually, uh, if, if you come up, so, so for, so okay, so this was 50%. For typical products, this is, let's say, 20% per year. So the typical volatility, the typical standard deviation of prices, let's say, is 20% a year, which would give, I wrote six years, I think. So it means that, okay, so, so for a typical uh, fluctuation of 50% away from the final, uh, fundamental value, it will take six years to get back to it. Okay, so it's, it's meaningless, right? It's, uh, we cannot do much with this. So, so we won't... Uh, believe in this. It might be a useful concept, and statistical efficiency seems to be even true. But, uh, but what we will try to see in the following is, okay, how, 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 can, how, can, how do prices change if this seems to, so the traditional claim in economics seems to be just uh, to be thrown away. Actually, I think it's fun. I put up this figure here from the New York Times. So in 2013, there were three people who got Nobel Prizes in, in economics which is, uh, this guy is uh, Fama, and this guy is Schiller. The th middle guy is written here, actually, I don't know what he did. But so what, what Fama did, he is the father of, of, uh, of this uh, fundamental efficiency, fundamental value theory, so he, and he still believes in it. If you ask him about how, how do you think that prices are all, always make sense, he said, yeah, I do not believe in bubbles, I don't know what they are, it is indeed true. This guy here instead uh, is the person, I think, who first showed this. Uh, actually, I will write up the name of this. So the, the fact that prices are much more volatile than news uh, would, uh, would suggest is called volatility puzzle in, uh, in the literature. So it uh, first comes from, uh, I, don't, I don't think the name, I don't know if the name comes from him, but it comes from Schiller. So it's, it's pretty funny, I think, uh, for so this idea this, uh, in economics that two people who say exactly the opposite got the uh, Nobel Prize at the same time. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a question of uh, related to yesterday's uh, movie about these underlying big truths, if they exist or not. And, uh, okay, so, uh, so, so this was uh, more on the theoretical side. So what do we want to do in the next? We want to understand a bit, okay, how, so, so, so somehow information does exist in the market. How, how, why do prices change? 
So how, essentially, how do this uh, information usually get built into the market, uh, to, to, to the prices, uh, and, and try to become more uh, doing some models about it. Yeah. Well, to me, it's the, maybe it's true, but it's meaningless, right? If there is a fundamental value from which you can deviate so much that it will be in six years that you get to it, then for any practical reasons, I don't care about this fundamental value. So, it's, I mean, it, I can, it doesn't disprove in a sense. I mean, there might be some fundamental value somewhere, but it's... It's high, but nobody knows it. And of course, okay, I didn't mention something. So what, what is this fundamental value? Okay, so one would guess the fundamental value is, is the real value of the company, right? Apple might have, the company Apple might have a price now, but then you can write up or look at all the balance sheets and come up with, with the real valuation. And you say that, okay, it's overvalued because... Um, so, okay, so, 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 so I want to discuss how well... How information is get get built into the market? Actually, I would call it like a, a short discussion before getting to a model impact and info. So there is a notion that we discussed a lot, and actually that's that, that's the answer uh, eventually to to our discussion is what is called market impact, which uh, which is okay. It's, it's a trivial claim that I already made. So. Uh, market impact, or actually it's called price impact often. It's simply the claim that if you buy on average, okay, it's important, on average buy trades, and I will define it in a second, will make the price go up, and sell trades will make the price go down. Okay, this is market impact. Of course, it's easy to claim, but it's hard to really measure. I want to make a, a, a just a short thing that we didn't discuss before is uh, so it's something to be always kept in mind is this is all figures, but this as well. So which was okay, the, the way the func market functions, of course, we, it's trivial to say that at any trade, there is a buyer and a seller in, involved in it. So you might ask, what does this mean, this claim? So the, the way we define the sign of a trade, so if it's a buy trade or a sell trade, is the, is the aggressive party, so the initiator. So in this case, so, so the person in the sense who would put a market order. So there are all those limit orders sitting, and then someone decides, okay, boom, I want to trade. That's the only way to, to have a proper, to have trades, so to have uh, buyers and sellers meet. So it's the sign of the initiator, which is the, uh, which is the sign of the trade. It's a definition. Okay? Actually, okay. Uh, okay, sometimes it's, uh, if you look at data, sometimes it's not that obvious to decide the, the sign of a trade, which should be the simplest thing. But so this is the claim, okay? And, um, and so there are three usual, ex oh, I will, maybe I will just discuss, uh, okay, three usual explanations for, for this uh, market impact. So one is that it's somehow, uh, that, that, that trades, uh, trades uh, convey info to uh, somehow private information. So, so, so the dynamics here would be that, okay, I have some information, so I trade, so others learn from me, so, 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 so others update their expectations, so price moves. Right, it's, it's a simple, uh, it's, uh, uh, hard to write it up, but it's okay. So what does it mean? I have information that price will go up from somewhere. I buy. People see that I buy. They say, wow, this guy has information. Maybe why why he, he, he trade if he didn't have information? Let's all think this. I mean, let's, let's, let's follow him. Or they might think that I'm an idiot and let's do the opposite. But somehow they, they get the information from this. Okay. The, so th this is one way of, of thinking about it. One which is, uh, which is a more actually... <laughs> A more physics approach, which says, so okay, of course, here, what information is, is an important question. And how do others know that I'm someone who has information and I'm not just a monkey? It's, uh, it's not obvious. And so, so the other is that you, you, you can, uh, another theory can be that it's, it's essentially 
uh, any type of fluctuations of supply and demand, which can be somehow random. So any random fluctuations have some uh, me mechanical mechanically impact the price. Okay, so, so it can be, I mean, you, you see already here, maybe people are looking at what's uh, the number of sellers and buyers, and if anything happens, they, they, they try to uh, update, uh, they, they try to, uh, sorry, so, so it's not, not really updating, it's, it's a mechanical man, manner that if someone here trades, he will take away some part of the, so if he's buying, he will take away some tar, part of the, of this supply here, the red ones, so the prices will mechanically move. What is written there? Mechanically? Impact. So, so, so this would be somehow, uh, uh, this would be, you say that impact is a statistical phenomenon, you can model it in, uh, in simple ways, it's not uh, some real information, so there, is, there are not trades containing information and trades not containing information. And also there is, okay, there is a third way of looking at it, which is, uh, which I won't even write up, which can be, okay, actually, or, uh, okay, I write it up, which is that it's just a question of forecasting. Of course, you can say that, yeah, sure, buy goes up, uh, the, the, if you buy, price goes up, but it's not this direction, it's more that you just forecast the price will go up and you're buying. It can make a correlation. So even if you weren't there, the price would do the same. So this is not really impact, so I, I, I won't discuss here. So, so the usual way to, to handle information in, in finance is, is the following. So we'll, uh, we will get to, to, to doing a bit of models here uh, to, to understand it better. But so the usual way is the following. You, you usually differentiate between, between uh, you say that uh, in models, so. Usual models in finance, you say that there are, uh, there are informed traders. Right, so you solve your problem about all this question of what is information, you say, yeah, okay, uh, there is a subset of people who are informed uh, and are rational, so okay, you, you, you they are trading in a way to, to exploit their information that came from somewhere and not everyone has them. And uh, so actually this is a bit like behavioral finance issues. And the other is that you have noise traders. Who are idiots? Who are, well, who are trading just, uh, who, who don't have information. They are trading to, to make things uh, work nice. So you can, okay, you can, so, so, Noise traders do not have information or do not have the, 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 the ability to process the information, whatever, it means that it does, it's the same. And okay, you can come up with explanations why they trade. So they might trade for other reasons. They might trade because, uh, uh, because from some liquid, for, for some other reason they have to buy, not because the price will go up, because, but somehow they really have to own this product or they have to trade to, for some risk reasons or they are simply irrational. They think they have information, but they are doing random stuff. So, okay, it's, it's a way to model this. And, and, uh, and so I want to discuss a few more just, just to get the taste of this. So what I want to start with is, uh, is a model which is called Kyle model because of uh, a guy called Kyle from 85, which is actually a, a super nice paper. So of course, okay, well, I, I, I'm, when I'm talking about all these uh, ideas in, typically in economics, I'm quite negative about it, but there are very deep ideas as well. So there are very clever people who may be following another approach that's what you would do, but uh, come up with, uh, with, with very good things. So, so I, maybe I'm too negative sometimes. So anyway, there is Kyle, a paper whose title is Continuous Auctions and Insider Trading, if you want to read it. Does anyone want to read it? Should I write up the title? Continuous auctions and insider trading. 
the, the title doesn't seem to be extremely sexy, but uh, so, so the idea is that it's, a, it's, it's a one type of model how information can get built into prices. Okay, so how info builds into prices. And actually it's somehow, so, so I said that we will discuss microstructure. This is somehow the, 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 the main paper, the, how information builds, gets built into prices. So, uh, so it's somehow the, the, the foundation of the field of microstructure. So what is, uh, it, it might be long to discuss it or not. Uh, it's a simple model, but it might be a new, new approach. So okay, you have a setup, which is that you have uh, one asset, Okay, there is only one product in the market. Let's forget all these correlations that we discussed, I mean, all across correlations. Uh, you have one informed trader. So that's also simple. Actually, she will have a name. She's called Alice. And, and there, is one, uh, there is one market maker, okay, that I will... Who is called Bob? I'll discuss in a second. And there are noise traders. Okay. I like it when you turn around and people. Okay. So so is it? So it's uh, we discussed. Okay. One asset trivial, one informed traders and noise traders. This we discussed, okay. And so what is a market maker? Market maker, we, again, we discussed several times. It's the person who, who somehow puts quotes in the market. So, so, so Alice and the, inform and the noise traders have to trade against someone. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's this type of auction so that they can decide the price and they will trade at the end. So this is in Warazin auction that we discussed in the beginning. So they will be only trade, able to trade at the price that the market maker offers them. Right? It's okay. And, um, and so, okay, so, 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 so what do they do? So, so what, what is their behavior and what, so, 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 what is their knowledge? The knowledge is the following. There is, there is Alice who, who gets some information. So, so, so we, are at the, we are at T0. It's a one step. It, 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 it's, it's a one step game. And he knows at T0 she, she gets info on, uh, on the price at, of the pro, uh, of the price of this asset that we are having at T1, okay? Which we will call actually PF for fundamental. But it's, uh, okay, so we are at time zero. She, she gets an information about the, where the price will go in the next step. That's it. She told her, uh, only one to know, which is okay. It's, so, so the market maker and the noise traders do not know and, uh, and so what does she want to do? Okay, she has this information. Uh, she has to decide what to do, how to trade. So, so uh, decides trade uh, Q based on, this, uh, based on this information. Q is, of course, a signed quantity. She can buy or sell depending on what she thinks. Uh, of course, okay, of course, the price now is P0. So it's, and... Uh, and of course, she decides to trade uh, in a way to, to maximize uh, expected gain, right? It's trivial. And okay, and there are some, so, so, in practice, she can trade whatever quantity she wants. So, so she, no, uh, this, no risk constraints. I put it in parentheses because you would have, uh, not ask me if there is a risk constraint at all, but okay, it's important to know that, okay, in the real world, of course, it's uh, the quantity that you want to trade depends on something. So this is okay, this is Alice, it's, it's, it's simple. 
there is the noise trader guys who are noise trading. So essentially, they do a random order flow. There are several noise traders, but since they are random, we can bunch them together. We say, so there is a random order flow of buying and selling. So, so the quantity they want, which we will call V noise. Okay, so it's a signed quantity again, the sum of all these people there. We will discuss how they said. And uh, so I'm discussing this in detail because it's okay. It will give some results, but also to, to get the taste of these type of models. Um, which is different from, from typical physics. And so, okay, there is the market maker, which is called Bob. And so what does he have to, he have to do? He, he, he has to clear the market. He has to trade against the people. Uh, so, she, so he has to set a price at which, uh, uh, at which he matches volume. So clear the market, which means, okay, match volume of uh, delta V, which is essentially, which is does the sum of these two. He will have to trade against this, so Q plus V noise, at some price P hat. And okay, again, we have, uh, we have uh, unrealistic assumption that he has no, what we call inventory constraints. Uh, meaning that, okay, whatever quantity Alice wants to trade, he, he, he will be on the other side, he will be available to, to trade. Okay? Yeah, so, so he doesn't, inventory means the amount of things you have in your pocket. So he's not constrained by this. If, if you are Alice and you want to trade, you say you want to sell me one million, I say, okay, I'll buy one million, I don't have any problems. I'm not constrained by a maximum size of my inventory of my, uh, okay? It's, it's not really, it's, it's, it's important in a real world and it's important in a, an economics language for us. I mean, you wouldn't have asked if it exists, but okay, keep in mind. That, 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 that to make realistic, you can, uh, you can uh, eliminate these and you will have another model which is a bit more rich. So this is the setup and then of course, the question is, okay, so it has a taste of this uh, game theory type of, type of thing, so what, what do we want to do? Yes. Yes. I, uh, which one? Bob. And? N. Okay. So, okay. So N is noise traders. Okay. I have to explain what they do, or just the N. The question of N was. So the noise traders generate. They they, they do noise. They are. They have no information. For some reason, they trade. Don't ask me. Uh, and they generate a random order flow. Order flow means buying and selling. So each of them, we will discuss the distribution of this order flow, but each of them does some random stuff, and then it's the sum of this random stuff, which we put into one variable because they are uncorrelated. And, and Bob. Uh, so what Bob does is, uh, Bob is available, Bob, Bob sets the prices in the market. So he has to trade against the noise, so, so to make the Alice and the noise traders happy, set a price. This is the setup, let's, let's not go deeper. And so, so he decides, okay, this is the total volume he will have to trade, the sum of these two, and he will ha have to decide a, a P hat where to trade. So his, his, his duty, uh, we will see what, what the dynamics are and then it will be clear what, 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 what we are trying to solve here. So, so the dynamics are the following, it's, it's a bit this theoretical finance taste. So, well, Alice tries to maximize gain. Well, we already said it here. Okay, maximize gain. But what is his gain? His gain, uh, her gain, her gain will be, uh, she knows that, that the price, the final price will be PF, this information she has. And she will be able to trade at P hat which is set by the market maker. And she's trading a quantity Q. So her gain will be this quantity here, right? If, if, if I know that the final price will be 150, now it's 100, and I'm trading 100, then my gain will be 100 times the difference between these two is 50, which is 5,000, okay? It's uh, one is a, 
So Q is a quantity. It's a quantity that she decides to trade. And P hat is the price which is set by the market maker to trade, which we'll see in a second how. So I, I'll write it up and then. Uh, so so the, this is the first step of the, of the dynamics. And what, okay, what does Bob do? Okay, she, he doesn't have information. So what he wants to do is uh, usual condition in this type of models is what we call break even condition. Which the idea here is uh, he wants to set the price in a way that, uh, that, uh, that it will be this quantity right uh, okay so so what 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 he does is uh, is um, is wants to set the price bre to, to break even, which, is, which means no systematic loss or gain. This is the most he can do because he doesn't have information, but he doesn't, have, he wants, doesn't want to have systematic uh, gain or loss. So what does he do? He observes delta V, that's the sum of, of all the trades, right? And condition on this, uh, he, he, he wants to calculate the, the, expect, uh, the, the conditional expectation of the final price, so the real information that Alice has, conditional on the, on, on the only information that he sees, right? And sets the price there. This is the best he can do. Okay, so it's, uh, and yeah. I didn't understand what is in the expected value, P plus or minus? F. So it's, it's, it's the information. Sean, where did we put it? Here. It's, again, it's an F. Okay? The idea is okay. Uh, so, so what does this mean? Okay, in, in a practical sense, it, it, I think it's, it's sort of a deep understanding or the deep idea of the market. So that there are people who have information and there are other people who are trading there. They, okay, you can ask why he's trading we will have more complicated model where we understand this, but he's afraid, okay, his job is to trade, but he's afraid of, he doesn't have the information that Alice has, he's afraid of, uh, of losing on this, so he start, start, tries to, to, to set the price. Uh, if he understands that Alice has a lot of information that the price will go up, he will also increase his price because he doesn't want to, 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 to sell her very cheap. Because of course, I mean, there, there is the next step, so of course then he will, have sold something that he would have, would have sold much for much more money later. Okay? Yeah. What's the expectation? I mean, what's the distribution? And is it, I mean, he has a lot of experience and then um, the market maker and... Okay, in practice, this is what you expect, right? That okay. It's a question yeah. or it's a claim. It's, it's a question. Yeah, so, okay, in, in a real world, just I have to clean up here a bit. In a real world, what you would expect is... Uh, is that sure that, that somehow uh, the market maker is there, he gets to understand something, it's not obvious, I mean, it's a super complicated process, but yeah, here we will have a simpler thing, so I mean, we, the, we need to give some more information to this. But okay, so this is the dynamics, and okay, so what are the further, further information? It's a further info, okay, it's, it's a bit this, 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 uh, uh, this game, game theoretical, so okay. Uh, Alice knows Bob's rule. Okay, Alice knows that Bob is going to, to do this. And Bob knows, uh, so okay, these are the usual trivia. Bob knows Alice uh, maximizes. Okay. And uh, so, so this is of course a, a rule here. He, he will have a, have a, have a, some some proper definition of the of this rule. Um, and then, okay, there are two things. So, so f okay, so the third is that Bo Bob knows that Alice knows that. <laughs> stuff. So I mean, everyone knows that everyone knows. Okay, it's I won't write it out. Uh, but okay, it's the usual, of course you know, and there are two things which is very important to this. So actually Bob knows two things. Uh, he knows that, that 
this guy, so V noise is, uh, is a normal distribution with zero mean and, uh, and something. Okay? And, and he also knows that, uh, that, that this mispricing, so, so, so that, that PF minus P zero, so, so, so the information that, uh, that, uh, that Alice has, uh, is also a normal, there's another, so this is a capital sigma V, which V stands for this V, and sigma F, F stands for PL. So okay, it's essentially, uh, he learned this somehow, or somebody taught him. Sorry? No, no, I, I didn't answer. I mean, how will he have the normal? I mean, just a Why is it normal? Yeah. Because he has a lot of, like, I mean, experience and... Yeah, so, I mean, okay, for V noise, you can imagine that it's not normal. It's, if it's, if it's not, I mean, we defined it as noise. Okay, why is it normal? Of course, why is it normal? Because you can solve it. Uh, but it's not that, I mean, sure. So, what, what is this uh, PF minus P0 is, is the amount of information. That, that this guy, this girl has. You don't expect it to be some, sorry, a normal distribution is an okay approximation for this. It's not that he will, she will learn that prices will uh, go 10 times up uh, in a, in tomorrow. Well, we know. But they know, but they don't know what the other is doing. So it's as if it wasn't known. So, so what is important that Bob doesn't know Q, right? Yes. He doesn't know the quantity that she is trading. If she knew Q, okay, she knows the total uh, amount coming in. So sure, it's not sure. It's uh, in a real market, you could assume that there is only one market maker. Sure, why would you assume that there is only one informed trader? Actually, we'll get to a, a further model, I don't think today, maybe it will be tomorrow, to, to make a bit more reasonable the model. But okay, it's, it's a start. I mean, in a model, you, you want to start simple and, uh, and see what that gives uh, overall. Yes. I'm, I'm listening, just I lost my notes. P0 is the, time, is the price at time zero. The price now. So now what, hap what, what the dynamics is, Alice sees the price now, and somebody comes whispers in her ear that the price at one will be, will be this value. And why this is a normal distribution? It's an assumption of the model to be able to, so it's, 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 it's stated. It's Bob knows that this information on average is normally distributed. Why? Well, because it will be easier, but also, because, okay, I found my notes. Uh, because uh, it's, it's an okay assumption, I think. But, but, uh, but there is no underlying deep uh, concept here. Alice, is known. Alice knows the value of it. Uh, so, okay, so, so, so the, is the main question clear? What, 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 what the game is that, Alice, uh, that Bob only sees, uh, sees uh, this quantity? And knows that that Alice will be maximizing those distributions. What, what, how, how, will, how, what, what will be, what will be, what will they do? So, so okay, let's 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 make us an, an assumption, which is a reasonable assumption, but we won't go uh, deep into its meaning. It, it, actually, okay, this will be a big critique of this type of model. Is that okay? Let's assume the following relation that, that, uh, that what Bob does, Bob's pricing rule is the following, the price he sets will be the price now, plus a linear dependence on, so, so plus some lambda times delta V, right? So he sees the total flow coming in and according to this in a linear manner, he changes his, uh, his price. There is a factor here, lambda. Okay, we will have to define what this guy, what, what that is. And what is important, so what does it mean? That in this impact language that we see, saw before, so, so that prices change, that price changes are correlated, correlated to, to trade flow, it's a linear impact model. 
the change in the price is linearly dependent on, 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 the, on the volume, which actually we will see tomorrow that, that it's, 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 it's not a good estimate, approximation for real data. Real data is more complicated, but okay, it's, it's actually many models are based on this. So, so what, what, what will happen? Uh, so what should we discuss here? Uh, Okay, so, so, so what, we, okay, Alice will maximize, so, so uh, what Alice is going to do in this case, he, she's, um, she, she, will, she will want to trade a Q hat, okay, which is, as we said, it's a maximization, so he, okay, in the math language, so he's maximizing his Q, or her Q, in a way, uh, that, that the expectation of, of, his, of her gain is, uh, well, he's, maxim he's choosing Q in a way to maximize her gain, where, as we said, gain is, uh, is here. So this is the gain, but so then gain actually becomes more, so if we know this rule, and she knows this rule, then her gain will be, will be, will be this. Uh, Right? Okay. Because she knows the rule. And um, okay, so, so we want to write up the expectation of this. Uh, I mean, we want to make the, the, the derivative this, of this and write up the expectation. So, who's losing this stuff? So, Okay, so, so, so what we know actually is that, that the expectation of delta V is uh, the expectation of, uh, of so, so delta V is simply Q plus, uh, plus, plus this normal variable. So the expectation of delta V actually will be expectation of Q, uh, will, will be Q. That, 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 that's simple. So with this, what he, he, she can write up is that her, her choice of Q hat you do, we have to just do the derivation, will be the following, uh, okay, I mean, uh, we are solving this, uh, this maximization, so it's, it's, it's a simple stuff. So what does it mean that, uh, that okay, Alice uh, will, will, will increase the, the, the size of her trade in a linear fashion based on her information, right? So this is her information on the price change. She will, she will, she will increase is uh, proportional to, this, to, to the information, the, the amount she wants to trade. And, uh, and so, but, but the more complicated thing is what, what, what Bob tries to do. So what does Bob, uh, where should I write? So what Bob wants is, uh, is, is estimate, uh, estimate Q to be able to, to determine the value of, of uh, to guess the value of PF, right? This is his, his goal. This is his goal. And so what, what he actually wants to do, uh, what he needs is the distribution, the conditional distribution, sorry. He needs, uh, it's this what he wants to solve. Okay? It's trivial. Uh, okay, I write Bob here because, uh, because it's his, his information. Okay, and uh, yeah, so here I wanted to, to give a bit of uh, homework. So actually, so this is what, what he wants to solve, okay? And so how should I state it in a homework manner? So, so do this calculation. So what is this? Of course, here you can write up a, a base rule, base theorem, right? It's, it's, it's known. So you write up, so, 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 uh, so determine the probability. So determine this, this, this guy here. Uh, from this, of course, what he actually wants is the expectation. So, 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 so try to determine this. Okay. 
and um, and give an exp so, so, so and, and uh, so give an expression for p hat. Okay, so it's, it's I think it's useful because uh, because you get a taste of of, uh, of what's going on, uh, but uh, it's, it's it's not it's not too complicated. So it's no, actually it's quite simple calculation. Okay, so this um, this is what uh, what he will do, and there is the solution from this. Okay, how should p hat behave? Well, uh, I'm giving away some hints, but okay. So knowing if you know p hat, you know how he's going to change his uh, what, what what has to be his his function. So okay, that I will give you. So so the final solution to this is the way he will behave is lambda being uh, the following formula. Okay, it's, uh, one has to come up with it. So this will be the final solution. So. So, so, so what is this value? This is the value to ensure, so just to make clear, I mean, I, I, I never know, I mean, I'm saying several times many things, but I don't know if I'm becoming boring or it's, it's needed. So this is the value to ensure what we said in the beginning that uh, okay, so this is to, to, to break even. Now, uh, what 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 do, does this mean? So, okay, this is the solution to the model. It's it's a bit a dry solution. If I mean, if you go through the calculations, it's it's more fun. Uh, so what does this really mean? That um, it's, it means the following. So, okay, uh, I'm using too much space here. So 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 that is the result there. But so, okay, what are the results or insights of this type of model? It is the following. So okay, there is a there is a something which is okay. It's sort of the impact will be linear in Q hat. Okay, it's sort of obvious if it was linear in delta v and delta v is a zero mean plus Q hat, Q hat then it should be the case that okay. So so there is a linear impact which which is predicted in this type of model, which is sort of put in. But what is more interesting is that uh, what Bob will do, so what, what we see there, is that uh, lambda, okay, so actually maybe it's, it's, it's good to, 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 so, so, so just this keep in mind, so this was, right? This was the beginning, so what, what is lambda? So what does, uh, so what does Bob do? There will be this lambda which grows with uh, information, uh, with the amount of information of the, of, the, of the informed trader, right? So which the amount of information of the noise uh, trader is, is, is sigma f. So the typical size of information. The more uh, trades, the, the, the more informed traders can have information, the more he has to protect himself against them. Well, it makes sense. I mean, so, so at the end, what, what this type of model gives is things that make sense, but uh, that's why you want to have a model. Uh, so, 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 okay, let's be clear. Needs to protect himself more, right? The, the, the more the information. And it also goes down another thing which might be, so this is more trivial. The other is that delta decreases decreases with the the the, the amount the, the volume of noise traders okay which is uh, which is uh, sigma which is measured by uh, this this distribution uh, the, the, this uh, this number yes Yes, so it can have larger values. So if sigma f is larger, it means that the, 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 the difference between, so the amount of information can be larger in absolute value, right? Because it means that it's the, 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 the difference between price now and the price in the future that I was told is, uh, is larger. 
Of course, the sign of so the average became remains zero, but it's not the average you care about. Of uh, but it's 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 its deviation because of course if 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 p f minus p zero, so this is the amount of information is negative, then I will sell or Alice will sell. If it's positive, she will buy. So it's uh, it's it's the size of this information that matters because she can decide the direction in which to go to be in line with the. So, so information Alice had. Information. Yes. 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 So yeah. So Alice is the only person who has information. So that's why I didn't uh, specify it here. Okay. But so the second is that, that delta de uh, lambda decreases with the volume of the noise traders. It meaning that, okay, the more there are these, okay, in a way you can say that the more there are these uh, lambs coming to trade in a stupid manner, the less I have to protect myself. So, so, so needs to protect himself less. Okay. Uh, so, so this uh, this sort of main main makes sense. They are in line with intuition, with this first intuition. What happens um, for Alice? Okay, for Alice, uh, things will all so in line with with what I one who should have the intuition. So her expectation, the expectation of her gain, will be. Will be the following. Okay, I don't write it out. Again, it's an exercise actually. If you want, it will be this. Um, so okay, I, uh, so this will be an exercise here. And okay, let's say that this is uh, also an exercise. Though it's it's, a, it's, a, it's simple. <laughs> we have all information by here. By now we have all information. So what does it mean? So her expected gain will go this way, so that um, she gains. Of course, it's 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 increasing. So increases with uh, amount of information trivial. Okay, so it, it, it's it's linear uh, increasing sigma f, but what is also important is that it also increases with some of these overall. Okay, I'll call it liquidity. And I'll just in a second, I'll define it. Uh, so, okay, discussing about the, the amount of volume of the noise trading okay it's, it's it's some type of noise for bob but it's also it's it's a positive it behaves in a positive manner for uh, for alice it's she can hide herself in this noise right if there is a lot of liquidity she can uh, she can trade more she's she's less visible again it's 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 in line with intuition so there is no nothing extremely uh, new in this but i think it's it's a simple model to 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 that, that gives the results which are in line with what one expects in a market um so, so okay. So, so to conclude on this, it's so, so, so it's a first type of model. It's it's. Uh, I mean, it's uh, the way going through it. Actually, I don't know. You will have to tell me. Um, it might seem very trivial. It's an obvious thing, obvious games, and obvious uh, results. But they are not that obvious uh, when you have to build it up. And it's uh, so. It's the first model that was uh, that I think was in line with, with these basic intuitions that there is a market maker. He has to protect himself from those who have information. How can he do this? Well, we, did, we gave the solution, and all that comes out is well might be in line with intuition, but it's good to think about. So, the more the infor trader there are, the, the the more he's in danger, and the more he has to change the price, and the more people on which he can make money. So the noise traders. There are um, who don't have information, the, the better for him. And instead, for Alice, he, her, her expected gain grows with both of uh, with both uh, sigma capital sigma and and, uh, and small sigma. Um, 
So okay, so we started at nine. Okay, because okay, so my idea was to to discuss uh, another model, but I think maybe it's it's, it's the right moment to stop and not start. Uh, no, it's it's too early to stop or. I mean, I have for, for 10 minutes to start something and uh, restart. Uh, okay, so um, okay, so that's what we'll do. But well, if you have questions, of course. Uh, but I think it, I hope it was clear. Yes. <laughs> 